I think the best way to talk about cannabis and how it affects the neurosystem is by starting off with a little true story. <clears throat> I have a friend who suffers from an issue called neuropathy, which is a, a nerve issue where the individual in their fingertips and in their toes has a constant burning sensation. And it keeps them up at night, and as you can imagine, having your fingertips and toes always burning would be a quite a maddening situation. And <clears throat> she traveled the world to find a remedy for this. She didn't just go to Western doctors, she also went to Eastern doctors, and went to acupuncturists, and just basically toured the world to try to find a solution for this issue. But uh, unbelievably, the one thing that she hadn't really tried was a form of cannabis known as Rick Simpson's oil or activated cannabis oil would be a <clears throat> more accurate term for it. And this is basically just a whole plant extract from the cannabis plant that is boiled down which activates it and then this is just simply either ingested through the mouth or through the rectum. And so she began to orally uh, consume a very small amount of this activated cannabis oil and after about 24-48 hours the burning sensation began to go away and after a day or two she began to sleep all night for the first time, eight hours, for the first time in as long as she could remember. And so even though she went around the entire planet trying to find a solution, the solution was actually found basically in any uh, healthy backyard, which is a, a backyard that has a cannabis plant growing in it. And this is missed because there's a couple of aspects about the cannabis plant that Western medicine just hasn't studied because they have basically obfuscated. They've, they've tried to bury this plant and its medicinal value because it's so effective. Okay, there are two principal systems that cannabis engages when it's ingested. The, the, uh, one of the systems is the endocannabinoid system, and the other system is the autonomic nervous system, the ANS, which is your fight or flight or rest and digest system. But first we'll talk about the endocannabinoid. So the endocannabinoid system is the anti-inflammatory system of the body, but the endocannabinoid system especially deals with pain. And so if you, say, have a broken arm and the, the arm is, is placed into a splint and held and, and just set, situated in a place where it's not being moved, it will stop hurting. The, the searing pain of the break will not be as searing after a time has passed and, and if the arm is held steady. Okay, the reason why that's happened is because the endocannabinoid system, your natural anti-inflammatory, anti-pain, system has been engaged and the brain sends cannabinoids to the area to calm the situation down. Nerves don't heal unless they're calmed down. And so the, the body, the nervous system, has to be brought into a state of rest or a state of peace, a state of calmness, a, a state of equilibrium is a good way to put it. And healing happens in that space. If a person is out of balance, if they're disequalized, Okay, they're not in a space of healing. And so one of the major benefits of cannabis is that it is always moving the individual into a space of healing, a space of balance. And this ties directly then into the autonomic nervous system. Now the ANS handles your rest and digest and fight or flight functions. So when someone breaks into your house, you instantly move into a fight or flight mode. And your heart rate increases, your breathing rate increases, your eyes dilate, your uh, veins constrict, and, and your muscles uh, contract. And what happens is, is you, are in a, you are in a position to fight. You're, you are ready to defend yourself and defend your family. And this happens all automatically. You didn't have to think about it. You didn't have to think, okay, i got to get ready. i gotta, I got to increase my heart rate. This all happened like instantly the moment the person broke into your house. Okay, well, in the same way, you have a rest and digest system. And so at night when you get sleepy and tired, and your breathing rate slows down, your heart rate is slowing down, and your eyes begin to uh, sag, you know, it's hard to hold your eyelids open, and, and your, your, your body and mind is trying to move you into a space of sleep, 
and you didn't choose this. This happens to you. A lot of people that are staying up uh, or studying, uh, oh, excuse me, a lot of people that are staying up late trying to study for a test or trying to finish taxes or something, the last thing you want to be is tired or you're driving a long way. But this happens to you automatically because your autonomic nervous system is always trying to keep you in a state of balance. And it's important for a human body to go through a waking cycle and a sleep cycle every 24 hour period. And so your body in its biorhythm is just trying to do that. And the autonomic nervous system is the principal, is the principal antagonist, you could say, for all of that happening. Now, cannabis can calm that system down and can also encourage that system to life. This is why a person who's depressed can be um, medicated with cannabis just as well as a person who's hyperactive with the same medicine. And the reason why that's the case is because cannabis does not put the body out of balance. It brings it into balance. So whatever is out of balance, cannabis will naturally bring into balance. So if you have a person who is depressed and wants to be active and be motivated and feel pleasure, feel dopamine and so forth, okay, they would want to take a sativa and they would just want to smoke just a little tiny bit, like one or two puffs of a sativa, and they would feel dopamine, so they would feel pleasure. They would feel energy. Their brain would awaken because it would awaken the brain. That small amount with the sativa would awaken the brain. And this person would be motivated because they would feel good. A lot of times a person who's depressed just has a hard time just feeling good in general because their dopamine system is so depressed. And cannabis helps encourage, massages the dopamine without causing addiction. And the reason why cannabis doesn't cause addiction is because it balances the autonomic nervous system, the ANS. Drugs like uh, coffee or, or caffeine, um, sugar, alcohol, uh, cocaine, uh, heroin, all of these drugs are highly addictive because they push the autonomic nervous system out of balance. Alcohol is a barbiturate, okay? it makes you sleepy. Cocaine is a, a, a adrenal drug, it, it, it activates the adrenaline system and the dopamine system. Uh, heroin is a depressant. Heroin is, brings about a ton of pleasure, but it depresses the person, makes them just want to sleep, and it's demotivating. Okay, well, see, what's happening with these different drugs is they are pushing the autonomic nervous system out of balance, and this creates addiction. Because when you pharmacologically force the autonomic nervous system out of balance, meaning you, you tell it, I want to be awake by drinking coffee, or you tell it, I want to be asleep by drinking alcohol, what you're doing is, is you're forcing it to action, and you're making it do something as a response to what you are doing in your behavior. And when you do that, it, it, it comes back in the opposite way. Because it's trying to pull you into balance, okay? So this is why a person, let's say like, there's a person who has a hard time uh, sleeping at night. Okay, so they wake up in the morning and they drink a cup of coffee, it wakes them up. And they go through the day, they have another cup of coffee at lunch. And so they've, they've got through the whole day with all the coffee that they need to get all of caffeine to keep them awake. And then they get home and they have, uh, uh, they have dinner and they have some alcohol after their dinner, which is a depressant, puts them to sleep. So this person, okay, they, they have completely jacked their coffee all day and now they're drinking wine or beer or whatever with dinner, which is a barbiturate depressant. And so this person will absolutely crash, I mean crash into bed, but it's going to be early. They're going to be really tired, they're going to fall asleep early, they're going to be really tired early. And then what will happen is, is they will wake up a few hours later and they can't get back to sleep because the autonomic nervous system was pushed by that alcohol. And so the autonomic is coming back and saying, no, we're going to wake up because you just took a barbiturate to put you to sleep. Now we're going to wake up because we're doing the opposite action because you've, you've thrown the biorhythm out of, out, of, out of sorts. And even if you don't drink the alcohol, the coffee, because you've jacked your autonomic all day, you're going to be extremely tired early that night. And so the whole sleep mechanism will kick in early so that you either are waking up early or you have a hard time getting to sleep because the sleep mechanism has been so pushed out of whack by the caffeine that you've been taking all day. These are just examples of how the autonomic nervous system is put out of balance and when that happens you get addicted because the next morning you've got to have that coffee or you're fuzzy, you can't think straight and you get a headache and massive migraine because you haven't had the coffee and, and so on and so forth. That, those are withdrawal symptoms. And the reason why you have withdrawal symptoms is because whenever you take drugs that push the autonomic nervous system out of balance, it's going to cause withdrawal. This is why cannabis use cannot cause withdrawal. You, you, cannot, you cannot become pharmacologically addicted to cannabis because 
it balances the autonomic nervous system. You can become psychologically addicted to it, just like you can become psychologically addicted to working out or going to work, being a workaholic. These are, you don't, you're not taking anything in, you're just becoming addicted to the action. Okay, and this, this in the same way can be addictive psychologically is the same way that uh, cannabis can become addictive psychologically. By just doing it day in and day out, day in and day out. You're not becoming addicted to it chemically. You're becoming addic addicted to it just in your daily routine. Okay, well, this is it, that doesn't cause withdrawal. That just causes a yearning to want it back. But you're not going to have any with physiological withdrawal symptoms like you will with another drug. Okay, all of these things that I've been describing about cannabis all point towards cannabis balancing the body. Ba uh, cannabis calming the nervous system. Uh, cannabis bringing the body and mind into accord and into a healing space. And this is principally what cannabis does. And this is off-putting to people that are, you know, go out and get them, get them, get them, you know, really highly active controlling people because it's, it's, it's bringing them calmness. It's bringing them into a state of calm and this causes them anxiety. And so they have to learn to ride with it. I'm just giving a broad definition here. And the point I'm trying to make is it's going to be really delightful for some people and for other people it's going to be a bit off-putting. It's going to be really delightful for the person who is really trying to calm down and is really trying to relax and just find some balance, go into yoga, into medicine, meditation and so forth. It's going to be really helpful for that person. But a person who's way hyperactive and stuff and, and likes that and wants to stay that way is going to get anxious when they use cannabis because it's going to calm them down and they're not going to feel calm in a space of calmness because their space of calmness is being active, is doing attacking life and conquering life. So cannabis has this unique way of bringing, no matter the personality, bringing that personality into a space of peace, into a space of calmness, into a space of reuniting with oneself and with the planet itself. And this is why it can do miraculous things like heal neuropathy, heal cancer, heal depression, heal all kinds of mental issues like Tourette's syndrome, seizures, things like this. The reason why it's so effective for seizures is because it's balancing the body. It's balancing the autonomic nervous system. It's balancing the brain. Seizure is a dysfunction of the... Excuse me. A seizure is a dysfunction in the brain. There are many different types, but in general. A seizure is a dysfunction going on in the brain because it's out of balance. There's something wrong in a certain hemisphere of the brain. And this is causing it to go into dysfunction, to kind of... Um, um, well, I can't think of it. I'm trying to think of a word, but I can't think of it. But anyway, it, it cavitate. It kind of causes the brain to cavitate for a moment. And this person drops out of reality. They, they drop out of the state of balance. And so people who have like Parkinson's disease, seizures, migraine headaches, a lot of times these people can bring a brain that is in a state of inflammation in a particular area that's causing it to be out of balance, can find such incredible relief from cannabis without causing any kind of major side effects, without causing addiction, and without interfering with the body's chemistry, but actually supporting it, especially the immune system. So this, this all helps a person understand how cannabis does what it does, wh how it balances, how it's so effective for so many different things, and why um, so many people can find relief with it, um, even if you're healthy. I mean, a person who's just living their daily life may find that just introducing cannabis into their life every once a week, twice a week, or every in the evening, they'll sleep better. They'll they'll or they'll have one night sleep. They just do it once once a week. They'll have one night where they just get a really good night's sleep that night, and that could just be transformative. Getting an incredible incredibly good night's sleep can be transformative to an individual. So this is the kind of stuff that it causes, and this is the kind of stuff uh, that it can do to help. A person. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.